I'm Okiansky, and you may be wondering how exactly can I make a teleport GUI in my Roblox game that allows me to go from one place to another with only a couple clicks. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so we're going to start with the workspace and setting everything up. I'm going to start by adding a folder to the workspace, and then I'm going to rename this to teleport. Next, I'm going to add a part to the workspace and then I'm going to put this inside of the teleport folder and I'm going to rename it to what one of my teleport places is going to be named. So I'm going to call this town and then I'm going to set the anchored to true and the can collide to false. Next, I'm going to move it to where I want it to be like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my town piece. Move that to my other teleport place. This is going to be over here. Like so. Then I'm going to rename that to the other one so that they have different names and they both describe where they're coming from. Okay, that's it for the workspace other than changing the transparency to one on these parts so that they are invisible and cannot be seen by the player. Uh, moving on from workspace, we're going to go down to replicate storage. And for organization, I'm going to put down a folder. But all you really need here is a remote event. So I'm going to rename this to remote events and then put down a remote event inside of that. I'm going to rename this remote event to teleport. Moving on, we're going to put a script inside of server script service. I'm going to rename this to teleport server. Then into starter UI, I'm going to place a screen UI and I'm going to rename this to teleport. And then I'm going to set up how I want the teleport GUI to be. This can be however you want, but this is how I like to, to make this. I'm going to put down a frame. Uh, I'm going to set the background transparency to 0.8. Uh, I'm going to set the size to 0 0.20, 0 0.20. That's how I start it. And then I move it and adjust it exactly how I want it. Inside of the frame, I'm going to put down a text label. That's going to go inside the frame. And I'm going to kind of do the same process. Uh, just set a value to there, delete the pixels, set a value to there, delete the pixels, and then make it exactly how I want it to be. Then I'm going to add text to this, call it teleport and just scale the text up a little bit. Okay. Uh, inside the frame, again, I'm going to put a text button. So I'm going to put that inside the frame. Uh, same thing, deleting the pixels. So I get my scaled size, not my pixel size. And then I'm going to place this here and resize it to about like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be somewhat uh, neat. Um, gonna change the color of this to a nice little light blue. And the background transparency to, I don't know, like 0.5 fish. Give it some text, call it home, and text size, maybe like 38 looks good. Uh, duplicating this, then moving it across, changing my text to town, and changing the town button, renaming it to town button, and renaming this text button to home button. This can be whatever you want it to name, just make sure that in the script you put the right names and everything. It is uh, the same on both sides. 
And lastly, inside of this screen GUI is a local script. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to teleport client. And that is it for setting everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the client. Um, that is the player side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and name off the GUI right off the bat, local GUI equals script, that parent. And I'm gonna name off the buttons next, local home button equals GUI that frame that home button, local count button. <clears throat> next, I'm gonna get the replicated storage where our where our remote event is located. Game get service replicate storage and the remote event inside it. Replicated storage dot remote events dot teleport. Next we're gonna make the function for when the home button is clicked. So I'm gonna click home button, mouse button, one click. This is an event. I'm gonna use the function connect to connect this function to a new function. And we're gonna call this, uh, you don't call it anything, but inside this function, uh, we're gonna get the teleport event and then we're gonna fire another function onto that called fire server. And then I'm gonna carry the parameter inside of it the name of the part I want to teleport to, which in this case is home. Now this is important, this is the really important part. The rest of the rest of the naming is however you want, but right here has to be the same name as the name of the part here. So home and home have to match, town and town have to match. The next function is very similar. Just go ahead and town button, mouse button, one click event connect function teleport event fire server same thing except the parameter now is town because that's where we're going to go with that button <clears throat> and that's it for the client now we're going to move on to the server and we're going to have the same variables for replicated storage and our event since they're the same on both sides and then I'm going to get the teleport folder, which is the workspace folder uh, teleport, name teleport. Then I'm going to have a function for when the teleport event is has an on server event. So when the event of this happening, it's going to connect to this function. And we're going to carry the parameters. By default, it's going to send the player. Since it's going from client to server, it's going to give us the player. So we're going to call that. And then we're also going to get the part name, which is the one we sent uh, manually. Local humanoid root part equals player dot character find first child humanoid root part. And if this exists, then the local part will equal the sorry, teleport folder, find first child, part name. So it's going to take the part name that we sent it and find it in, the, in this folder. That's why it's important that the name is the same, both capitals and spelling, uh, between the parts and the client uh, script, the parameters. So if part then humanoid root part that C frame from our player, it's going to equal that part's C frame. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And it should work now. So we're going to go ahead and test it and see if it works. All right. We're in the game. I'm going to go ahead and click town. And it'll take it, me to the invisible town part that I have assigned. I click it again. 
and again it should work and I'll click home and it'll take me there as well so town home like so if I reset since it's in the since the screen GUI is in the start GUI it should come back right away so it's fully functional uh, no problems whatsoever and easily implemented to any of your Roblox games.